Okay, today at Flamblade in Orchards we're going to make some bagging box ciders and I thought I'd do a short video just to show you how it's done. The first job of the day is cleaning everything and sterilizing it. They say in a brewing trade that you're basically a glorified janitor and in truth that's the same with cider making. So first of all we'll go outside and we're going to clean out and sterilize our mixing tank. This here is a conical 200 litre uh, tank. It can be used for fermenting in beer or all kinds of things. So to clean this off we're basically just going to spray all the inside with 2% sodium met solution and I'll spray that and I'll hose it out and then drag it inside and then we'll start sterilizing all the tubing. Okay so the next part of it is to do our blend to make up our cider blend. So here are giant um, fermentation bags here and I'll explain those now. So what's actually happening here is I originally ferment in these giant um, IBCs, this thing here, and when it's finished fermenting I then put it into these bags. The reason I do that is the plastic here is actually fairly permeable to oxygen and oxygen is the bane of cider making, it will just ruin a cider. Uh, when it becomes, there's too much oxygen in there, it'll become oxidised in flavour, it'll allow film yeast to get in there, and they'll create kind of wet cardboard flavours and all kinds of horrible stuff, and other aerobic bacteria will go on, so it just ruin it. And um, while the cider is fermenting, the yeast is gobbling up any oxygen in there, and it's producing CO2, so it's nice and safe. When it's finished, then what will happen is over time, oxygen will diffuse into the cider from outside, and the CO2 will dissolve out. And when too much of that's happened, it will basically allow all the bugs to get in. So to fix this, when it's finished fermenting, I actually put them in these bags here. And they have an oxygen uh, barrier layer in there as well, which is a multi-layer kind of bag. And um, that will stop too much oxygen going in. I'll also add some sulfite at this point in time, um, sodium metabisulfite sulfite at 50 parts per million. And that will mop up any free oxygen that's in there to stop that having a, a field day on my expense and it will um, also inhibit any of the worst bacteria and so basically we're pumping this out into the mixing tank as you can see and I've already decided what the blend is going to be because this is sunshine so we want seven parts or 70 litres of that IBC there and you can see on the back when it hits 70 I'll flick the pump off so it's almost done and this is a Dabinet Michelin blend that I got of apples that I got from a traditional full standard orchard in Monmouthshire, um, a cattle grazed orchard from a lovely gentleman called Bruce. And um, the really good old trees with really good high quality fruit. So it, when it ferments, it produces a nice, drying, bittersweet side. It's very lovely. So it's almost at 70. And so we'll turn it off now. Okay, while it's pumping and filling up the mixing vessel, I thought I'd just quickly talk about this pump. I have this imported from Belgium, they're actually cheap to be fair. But what I fitted on here is what's called a bypass, which perhaps you haven't seen before. And it's basically at the bottom there, you've got the two entry points to the pump. I've got two tubes coming up on cam lock fitting, so I can just remove the bypass if I want or put it back on. And at the top you've got T pieces and you've got the ball valve in the middle and you've got entry and exit on either side on cam locks. You can just attach any tube you want. And the idea behind the bypass is preferentially liquid will flow down the easiest route. So if you open the bypass, it, rather than pushing, say, the liquid down a length of tube with a lot of resistance, it'd rather just uh, suck the liquid back through the pump. And by adjusting the uh, amount the uh, ball valves open, you can adjust the flow rate. So it's a very simple way to adjust the flow on a pump, which is it's quite handy for doing bottling or something, where you want a slow flow rate going into um, a reservoir for your bottler. And the one other thing perhaps, I don't know if I've cut the earlier part or not, that, that I haven't said is, it looks a bit odd, but the reason everything's on stainless steel cam locks here, three quarters BSP, is I've got loads of different pieces of kit and they've all got different fittings. And I basically had a hissy fit because I was sick and tired of having to screw another hose tail on of a different size or having to get another piece of tube just to fit things together. So I said sod it, everything in the barn is three quarters BSP cam locks. And so it's basically how everything runs. I mean, 
it is a bit pricey, but you basically once you've bought it once, it's there forever. And it is nice and clean, and it's easy to use, and the cam lots are pretty much bomb proof. So I only need a few different length tubes for all my pieces of kit, rather than having, say, multiple sets of different diameter tubing, or step ups and step downs for every single piece of kit. And I've got a lot of different fittings here. Okay, now we're doing the second part of our blend. So we'll be taking some more chlorm and IBC at the end there in this tubing. And we're going to fill it up for the next 13 parts. But the thing I didn't say earlier that I love about this uh, tank is being a conical and filling it from the bottom. And what this means is, because I'm not, say, doing it in a small scale and taking it out of a jug and just pouring it in, I'm not adding any oxygen. Because as I said, uh, you know, oxygen is the bane of cider making. So by filling from the bottom, uh, I'm excluding any real air being mixed in, you know, with turbulent flow or anything. So um, because uh, the bags don't have any oxygen at the other side, at no point I'm kind of, you know, sucking oxygen into the cider and ruining it. Um, what I am doing is, as well, I used to mix the sugar up with some cider first, give it a big stir and then tip it in and that was obviously adding oxygen as well but then I tested it and realised that because it's filling from the bottom and obviously sugar's heavy it'll sit at the bottom it'll self mix itself so I don't have to actually mix the sugar so by adding it dry to the um, conical and then um, pumping it from the bottom it'll just blend everything up so what I'm trying to do is minimise the um, oxygen content at all in the um, cider and when it's finished I'll then take the tube that I'm obviously using over here to fill from and I'll put it in the top of the container. And the nice thing about this pump is I can actually swap the direction. So what I'll do then is I'll suck cider from the bottom and just put it in the top. And I'll cycle the whole thing for say 5-10 minutes. Okay, as I said earlier, the next thing I'm doing here is just homogenizing the tank, blending it up. So. I'm taking it from the bottom of the tank and using the pump because it's reversible to just pump it in the top. So I'll do that for 10 minutes. And what I thought I'd just briefly say is I didn't really show it earlier is the fittings here to actually go into the um, bags, the fermentation bags I used earlier. And it's uh, two inch BSP fittings on the top of those. And it's just going into a ball valve as well. And the reason I've just got a ball valve on there is I can seal it off. So if I'm you do multiple bags at once. I don't really want to leave it open to the air to let bugs, flies, you know, bacteria, whatever, to get in there. So I can just disconnect the cam lock fitting off the top and just close the ball valve and like move to the next one and go back and forth. And I've got multiple of these, so if I'm doing a lot, I can just you know attach them to several bags and just uh, rattle through it all. So anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to. Homogenize the tank for 10 minutes then. Okay, the next stage then is to taste the cider as we blend it for a while and check the specific gravity. So I'm taking some off and I'm just testing it with a small hydrometer here. And that's actually saying 10 11. And we wanted it at 10 12, and that's what the maths say, but this is kind of small, not very good hydrometer. So I'd say it's about right. So we'll taste some now just to make sure it's. Uh, Right, without breaking the damn hydrometer, if we can. So I'm sick of breaking those. So there we go. Sunshine. Give it a swirl and a sniff. Yeah, it's, well, it smells the side, eh? It's got a nice fruity nose. This uh, kind of smells like traditional cider. It's, it's what I want. No, no off smells in there. It doesn't make you go, ugh. And it's got a nice colour. Slightly hazy, but uh, it's still pretty clear. You wouldn't say that's scrumpy, and um, we'll taste it. Hmm. Yeah, it's medium, um, which is what I wanted, of course. It's got a nice balance of acidity. It's it's got some sharpness in there, but it's not jumping down my throat and yelling at me. So it's it's a nice amount of sharpness. There's tannins at the uh, back of the uh, mouth there, which is what I wanted. Slight vanilla notes, um, tannins not overpowering, it's certainly not overpowering for a medium, might be slightly too tannic for a medium, but it's, it's good enough, and um, there's sweetness in there, being a medium, but it's not overbearing. It's actually a pasteuriser, 
an inline pasteurizer so we can pasteurize the uh, cider before we put in bag in boxes because uh, we use natural sugars here we don't use unfermentable artificial sweeteners so obviously if you're then putting the cider with the sugar in a bag there's yeast in there and it's going to want to start fermenting it again which will cause the bags to swell up and potentially burst and the pub landlords won't be happy with you so I'll just show you how we actually pasteurize it here so we've got our mixing tank again 200 litres slowly chugging away and it's um, coming out the bottom again and it's going to our pump over here and we're using the bypass in here to adjust the flow rate ensure everything's nicely pasteurized and that's coming into here then the entry point there and it's going into 10 mil stainless steel tubing this here if I take the top off is um, a scrap stainless steel hot water tank that I've just basically cut the top off and if I take the unit top off you can see inside and on the rear of the unit we have four three kilowatt immersion heater elements in a water bath and all this weird hoops here is stainless steel 10 mil tube and I've bent around and kind of big use and cider is currently flowing through that and there's 28 meters in there originally I had 18 and it wasn't enough so I put 28 meters in and the cider is flowing through there and it's transferring heat from the water in the water bath to it and the reason it's all bubbling away like this is there's a standard hot water pump just circulating the water to ensure um, there's as much heat transfer as possible. When I turned the pump on, it made about four degree difference. So it actually makes a hell of a difference. And the pump's just down there, and it's just taking water from the bottom of the tank to the top, essentially. And the elements um, don't have their standard um, controllers in there to set the temperature. That's been disabled, and it's all actually running up here. And what I've got at the top here is I've got a small temperature controller unit and it's reading the temperature about three quarters of the way down the tank into what we'd say the cold spot and it's using that to turn on four relays because that unit has one relay it turns on four relays that are on time so they don't all turn on at the same time and they just power the four elements and so i've got this set 67 degrees and it's the spinning light there is indicating that it's currently uh, heating so it's working about right it's um it's fighting away with it and um, the reason I set down uh, the speed on that about there is that's the maximum it will do. The cider is coming out at the same temperature as the water bath without the elements being um, unable to keep up. So that's the, it's the fastest I can do it basically. And in fact it looks like it might be slightly struggling so I'll just turn it down more slightly. And the nearer horizontal that is the slower it flows so it should be about right but I'll set it to that just to make sure it's working and so the cider is in 10 mil and it comes out here it does in 10 mil there and it's actually then into 3 8 beer line and you see that there you see some air bubbles blowing through there oh well. anyway and this is heavily insulated because I don't want to lose any heat in here and this is basically then coming up to here, which is a, I'll flip this around, a 70 litre stainless steel stock pot. And you see the side is insulated and it's flowing into it. And I've insulated this with actually leftover uh, insulation from the camper van conversion. And it's two layers of this double, um, you know, foil backed bubble wrap insulation. It's not the best. It's nowhere near as good as, say, the insulation on the tank itself, but it's, it's good enough. It's, it's stopping some of the heat leaving. And we slowly leave this tank fill up, basically. And I've got a temperature gauge on here, and that's at that level. And the side is currently down there, so it's not reading correctly. It'll be about 63, I'm guessing, when it's up there. And obviously, this is just a sight gauge, so I can see how high it is. I haven't put the numbers on it yet. I've been a bit busy, but uh, I'll put those on that will just say the actual volume. I know it's got tap here. I'm not sure if you can see this, but as the temperature reading on the line out is not currently working, we'll measure the temperature directly in the line to see what we're hitting. And you can see that's the liquid coming in there. And we're hitting uh, 66.9. Well, that's good enough for me. That is pasteurized. And so we'll leave this tank then to fill up. And I can't breathe too much of that because obviously there's a bit of alcohol in the air and it makes you quite dizzy. So. 
So for completeness' sake, we'll just fill a bag to show you basically how it's done. So we've got this on the weighing scale; it's nice and zeroed. You got the tube in the bag, and all you have to do is bloody uh, click that. I'm your father's brother, and you can see it's slowly ticking up at the back there. And when that hits the correct weight, we're done. The specific gravity of this is one point. 0.12, multiply that by the volume, it's 20 litre bag, and that will give you the fill weight. So as long as we exceed 20.22 kilograms on that, we know we've got the 20 litres. And I overfill by just a small amount always, just to give a good margin error, and also, so they've filled a lot of bags, and I want to make sure they're correct, and they pasteurise okay. I can then still draw a small amount from it, without um, obviously putting it under the weight and being unsaleable.